Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our online event today. I am the West End Home Builders Association CEO, Mike Collins Williams. We're very excited to host our modern pay on demand surety bonds webinar today with our guest speakers from Marsh Canada. Fraser DeWall, Senior Vice President, West Zone Construction Leader and National Residential Construction Leader, and Stephanie Kuntz, Vice President, National Construction and Surety Practice. Thank you to Marsh Canada for the presentation today and for supporting the association to make this event happen. I'm going to turn it over to WeHBA uh, First Vice President Terry Johns to uh, introduce our WeHBA partners. Thank you, Mike. I'd especially like to thank our corporate partners, Diamond Partner, Enbridge Gas, Platinum Partners, BDO Canada, Bell Canada, The Hamilton Spectator, RBC Royal Bank, Gold Partners, Customer Insight, Kojiko Connection, MTE Consultants, Web ROI, Silver Partners, Reliance Home Comfort, Rogers Communications Canada, and our Bronze Partners, Coast Wholesale Appliances, Core Slab Structures, DJB Chartered Professional Accountants, Federated Insurance, First Ontario Credit Union, Lowry Insurance Group, McHugh Whitmore LLP, Meridian Credit Union, Molinero Group, and T. Johns Consulting. Back to you, Mike. Our first speaker today is Ontario's true champion of modern pay on demand surety bonds. Ontario Home Builders Association President Bob Schickendance. Getting surety bonds on the provincial and municipal agendas has been a priority of Bob's presidency at OHBA, and he has done a ton of work on this file. I'm going to repeat that, a ton of work. Bob has literally met with probably more than half of Ontario's cabinet, including the current and previous finance minister, as well as the current and previous president of the Treasury Board about surety bonds. Under Bob's leadership, OHBA has also invested resources into research, and advocacy that the West End Home Builders Association was able to harmonize, harness, and utilize in our own advocacy work with the City of Hamilton. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Mike, and good morning. I hope everyone's well, and despite being very busy, you've had some time or will have some time to spend uh, with family and friends this summer. First off, I want to uh, thank the West End Home Builders Association and your CEO, Mike Collins Williams and the West End team for extending the invitation to uh, participate this morning's session to discuss the importance and potential benefits to our members and our industry on the use of pay on demand bonds as security for site plan agreements and subdivision agreements. To start off, I thought to illustrate, I'd give my perspective as a builder developer, and I'm sure many of my thoughts will resonate well with you. So a bit of history now, typically in the 60s and 70s, bonds were the common form of security. But unfortunately now, most exclusively municipalities only accept letters of credit or cash. And the question is why? Well, first, LCs became common, a common financial instrument. They're on demand, liquid, easy to use, not necessarily uh, for municipal purposes, but more importantly for international trade and commerce. So they became a widely used financial instrument. Secondly, bonds at the time were akin to a typical construction performance bond that requires proof of default before payment is made. And this made them cumbersome. I want to be very clear though, and our presenters will provide the detail, the pay on demand bond that we're discussing today is completely, and I repeat, completely different from the standard performance bond. So the old performance bond, just put that out of your mind and listen and learn this morning. So as a builder developer, what is the concern with posting an LC as, as the current practice? And I think to our municipal partners attending this morning, uh, you should uh, listen to this and be aware um, of these concerns because they might not be on your radar screen. So the first point is the bank's requirements in terms of the amount of credit we have. So let me explain. For instance, if I have a subdivision and the cost of putting the services in for that subdivision is $5 million, well, I need to go to my bank, not only ask for $5 million of credit to, to pay my contractors and install the services, but I also need $5 million worth of credit capacity 
for the letter of credit I have to post to this city or town. So in essence, for a $5 million project, I'm doubling up on my credit. I need $10 million worth of credit. Second problem. So I need credit worthiness either on that project or my company needs that credit worthiness to have $10 million worth of credit so I can move forward. If I don't, the bank may require a portion or all of that to be posted via cash, cash that I may not have. And the situation becomes worse and we all know this. So typically we get our letters of credit, we get our money, we put in the services, we build the homes, the people move in, we discharge the lots to our final purchasers. Well, in discharging those lots, this, the bank no longer has any security against the land or the project. And we still have letters of credit typically in the order of 10, 15, 20% with the municipality for the warranty and maintenance and guarantee periods, which stretch from two, three, sometimes four, even five years before final assumption takes place. For this amount of letter of credit that's still sitting there, for sure, the bank is going to require the cash collateralization. So over a period of time, if I have one, two, or a couple of projects, all my cash is sitting collateralizing LCs, and I don't have credit capacity or money to, to bring further projects on. So it doesn't take long for big companies, small companies, and anything in between um, to find ourselves in a position where we're unable to uh, build more project because we run out of credit or cash. And you add this up across our industry, uh, you find that there's a, a lack of money available then to provide uh, for infrastructure and housing supply. This is a problem. Now there is, an there is an alternative and you'll learn today the use of pay on demands as an acceptable alternative. And I, I, I stress again, an acceptable alternative to LCs and cash will enable neighborhoods right across the province to be built faster and sooner. And this is what, just what we need at this time to jumpstart the economy post COVID pandemic to not only address housing affordability, but also um, to create employment opportunities in these communities. And the good news is, and you'll learn this this morning, by implementing this alternative will not, and I'll repeat again, will not add any additional risk or burden on our municipal partners. This is terrific. Now OHBA has put in considerable effort at the provincial level uh, to secure and advance the adoption of pay on demands as an acceptable form of, of, of security. We made uh, numerous presentations to the Ontario Jobs and Recovery Committee, as Mike alluded to, countless meetings with MPPs and cabinet ministers. The goal is to have the use of pay on demand bonds at the provincial level incorporated as a budget measure. Unfortunately, while our efforts were very well received, and we received extremely positive feedback from all parties. They were intrigued and liked the idea. The province stopped short of mandating the use of pay on demands as an acceptable alternative. And while we continue to advocate at the provincial level, we have changed our strategy and we're taking the show on the road, engaging our locals and members to meet with our municipal partners to provide the details and outline the positive benefits not only to our industry, but more importantly, to the very communities and neighborhoods where we build. Remember, this initiative is about achieving positive outcomes, doing a better job without adding cost and creating any more risk. It truly has the potential to be a win-win situation for everybody concerned, particularly new homeowners and renters, our home believers. Finally, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate and thank your leadership at West End Home Builders Association for taking this bold initiative forward and securing the approval and the use of pay on demands bonds in the city of Hamilton. To the city of Hamilton, thank you for taking this visionary step forward and recognizing how this small but meaningful change will contribute towards growth and the economic well-being of the city. To our partners this morning, 
please let us know when we can provide a detailed pr presentation for your consideration. We're more than pleased to do so. FYI, along with the city of Hamilton, the town of which Serge Stouffville recently adopted the use of pay on demand bonds. And they joined the city of Pickering, the town of Innisville and St. Thomas who are accepting the use of pay on demands. Furthermore, in the next two weeks, OHBA has already secured meetings and detailed presentations with the region of York, city of Vaughan, city of Kitchener, city of Barrie, and the town of New Tecumseh. I encourage you to be a leader and a visionary in this space, because in essence, it's a bold reflection of your commitment towards creating great communities. Thanks for having me this morning. I look forward to the presentation. Thank you, Bob. We very much appreciate you being here today and for all of your work with OHBA and your ongoing work at Queen's Park and championing surety bonds uh, across Ontario. Um, I'd now like to introduce WeHBA First Vice President, Terry Johns, who is instrumental in her work on behalf of our association to get modern pay on demand surety bonds on the agenda in Hamilton and ultimately approved in Hamilton. Terry was appointed Vice Chair of the Mayor's Task Force on Economic Recovery at, as the WeHBA representative. The work she did was not only for our association, but it was really all about all of Hamilton. Everyone who lives there or does business there in terms of coming out of this pandemic and shifting towards recovery. There were over 100 recommendations in the Mayor's Task Force report, and Terry was very helpful to see this particular one through to the decision just a few weeks ago for the City of Hamilton to formally adopt the use of pay on demand surety bonds. Over to you, Terry. Thank you so much, Mike, for the kind introduction. I'm actually going to get, if you could flip to the next slide, that would be great. Thank you. I thought what I'd do this morning is just to provide a timeline to give you some background on how we arrived where we are today. Last May 27th, 2020, in recognition of the importance of home building to Hamilton, the mayor asked me to represent the association on his task force. I was honored when the board supported my appointment. As a small business owner, I was trying to navigate through the pandemic, as was everyone. I was concerned about public processes. How would they keep going? How would I get my clients work done? especially with City Hall closed. I was excited about contributing to the work of the task force as an opportunity to do something to help the city through the pandemic. On June 4th, 2020, we held our first task force meeting. Ron McCleary, president of Mohawk College was appointed chair and I was appointed vice chair. The mission of the task force was to provide multi-sectoral leadership and direction to guide Hamilton's economic recovery in the immediate aftermath of COVID-19 pandemic. Our goal was to formulate an aggressive action-driven plan to ensure that Hamilton landed in a strong economic position, both for the short and long-term. To represent the sectors, seven working groups were created. These included agriculture, manufacturing, hospitality, public health, workplace and office, arts and infrastructure, transportation and building, and that's where I fit in. Between June and October, we held monthly task force meetings. In addition to that, each working group also met at least once or twice a week. In particular, I worked with Kathy Puckering, president of the Hamilton International Airport, as she represented transportation, and Mark Elker, business manager of the Hamilton Brantford Building and Construction Trades, representing skilled trades. Our job was to identify collective short-term and long-term actions for our sector, propose solutions, including where assistance was required from other levels of government, and finally, to prepare a written report back to the task force. On November 26, 2020, that full re report was presented. In total, as Mike said, it includes 103 recommendations from the seven sectors. From our sector, I ensured that surety bonds were included, as well as others supporting the continued strong residential growth of our city. I promise I won't go through all 103 recommendations, but I will put a link in the chat. It'll take you to the report, and you'll see there that it provides green check marks as we work our way through implementation of the recommendations. I'm happy to report that our working group has a couple of green marks. December 9th, 2020. 
This is when the entire report was presented to the General Issues Committee and it received support. At the same time, motions were taken forward supporting recommendations that a report be done by staff to review the potential use of surety bonds. A week later, on December 16th, Council supported not only the report, but the motion to consider the use of surety bonds. Between January and March, we continued to have our task force meetings. Our last one was on April 16th, 2021. At the same time, our DILG committee between January and May took on the role of advocating for moving the surety bond report forward. On June 3rd, 2021, the staff report went to the Audit, Finance and Administration Committee. A number of delegations spoke in favor, including ourselves. We were pleased that the recommendation to allow surety bonds was unanimously approved. On June 9th, 2021, Council supported this, and here we are today with the use of surety bonds in the City of Hamilton. One short year from the first meeting of the task force on June 4th, we successfully implemented an action with significant economic benefits that Bob went through for us. Charity bonds not only benefit builders and developers, but also hundreds of other businesses who work to support Hamilton's city building objectives, including my own small business. I'd like to take a moment to thank Hamilton City Council, as well as staff for their help on the report. Also our members, Stephanie and Fraser from Marsh, and all the others who are at the table guiding this important initiative along. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Terry. I would now like to call on Fraser DeWall, Senior Vice President, West Zone Construction Leader and National Residential Construction Leader at Marsh, and Stephanie Kuntz, Vice President of National Construction and Surety Practice at Marsh. Over to you. Good morning, everybody. Maybe I'll start by um, just thanking uh, both Bob and Terry for, for your truly um, extraordinary volunteer efforts on this initiative. Uh, my name is Fraser DeWall. I'm with uh, Marsh Canada. Thank you, Mike, for the introduction and we HBA for hosting today's event. Marsh is a global leader in insurance broking and risk management. Our team works with clients to anticipate, quantify, and more fully understand the range of risks that they face. In today's increasingly uncertain global business environment, Marsh helps clients thrive and unlock new opportunities for growth. And that brings me to today's topic, modern pay on demand surety bonds for development. Our team at Marsh has been at the cutting edge of developing this positive product solution for the last few years. A development bond, and maybe you can um, flip to the next um, screen there. Thank you. Um, a development bond provides financial assurance to a municipality that a developer will successfully complete all obligations under a development agreement, providing, as Bob mentioned, the same quality of financial protection as a letter of credit or LC. The bond offers developers an alternative form of security to an LC. Uh, you can flip to the next slide. So municipalities require financial assurance from developers to guarantee that they will complete their obligations under a development agreement. For many years, the city of Hamilton has mandated letters of credit as the only acceptable form of financial assurance. While letters of credit are functional and effective, they have their drawbacks, most notably cash collateralization. They need to create, the need to create an alternative method of security became clear to industry. Partnerships were formed involving local associations, industry stakeholders, and bonding experts. It is this collaborative effort that led to the creation of development bonds, which free up opportunity costs to developers while still providing municipalities with financial assurance. Stephanie will get into specific details of the development bond further on in the presentation. 
It is that high opportunity cost that made it pretty clear to our collective group the importance of creating a commercially viable alternative to letters of credit. Our team at Marsh was able to pull together a combination of expertise in developer surety, residential construction, and land development. We kicked things off with the City of Calgary and worked together with the local home builder association, which is called Build Calgary, to arrange a meeting with the legal, finance, and planning and development teams at the city. Over the course of the next several months, we worked together and successfully launched the pay on demand development bond with the first major city in Canada to accept it in this format. It is important to note that this is a new form of bond and Stephanie can add some color to this point at this time. Thank you and hi everyone. As Fraser and Bob mentioned, this is a new enhanced form of bond. It is a demand instrument designed to mirror the functionality of a letter of credit, which is why it is referred to as the modern pay on demand bond. This bond is different from the traditional performance bond, which is classified as a default instrument. The traditional default instrument requires the beneficiary of the bond, the city in this case, to prove that the developer was in default of the agreement and the surety company is obligated to verify that such default did in fact occur. However, the modern pay on demand bond is a demand instrument. What that means is that the city can demand funds from the surety company and will receive such funds without the need to submit to investigation. Back to you, Fraser. Thank you, Stephanie. So people have asked us this question, how did you accomplish this after we've been working on it for the last 20 years? And the key was that we asked the city, what do you need in order to make this work instead of going in and telling them what they must do? We aligned the solution to meet their needs, worked with the local association, city staffers, and local developers. The result with it was a solution that worked. And since that first major city transition in 2019, we have experienced tremendous success in multiple different cities across Canada, including some, some on the um, screen now, but uh, Kelowna, Edmonton has transitioned, Airdrie, Leduc, Strathcona County, St. Albert, Cochrane, Red Deer, Alberta, and now Hamilton. Similar to Alberta, where once one major city transitioned to bonds, we expect many other Ontario-based municipalities to transition over, and we are currently working with a number of them, as Bob mentioned earlier. Please reach out to Stephanie or myself if you'd like us to work with a municipality where you, you would like them to transition over to accepting bonds as, as an alternative to letters of credit. Marsh has developed a team that has the best expertise for development bonds in Canada. The Marsh team and our close alignment with industry and local associations such as we HBA have enabled us to achieve very positive results for developers and industry across Canada. Lastly, before I hand it over to Stephanie, I'd like to give a shout out to the team at WeHBA. Mike is a leader that gets it. And, and it took just one call with him when he first started in his new role with WeHBA for him to understand the significance and priority of this initiative. He jumped on board immediately. I'd like to thank Mike and his team and also Terry Johns and the city of Hamilton for their excellent work on this. Hamilton and area's home building industry is in very good hands working together with WeHBA. Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Fraser. As Terry and Fraser spoke to earlier, Marsh Canada and the West End Home Builders Association collaborated on this shared initiative to improve the business environment for land developers active in the city of Hamilton. Implementing the use of pay on demand development bonds as an alternative to letters of credit was an important focus of the city of Hamilton's economic recovery task force. Marsh Canada have successfully brought about implementation of these bonds in multiple other municipalities throughout the country. And as dedicated members of the WE HBA, we felt it important to collaborate with the association to assist the city of Hamilton in reaching this achievement as well. Over the course of months, we consulted with the finance team at the city to work through the technical aspects of the bond 
and its functionalities, which we will go over here today. In early June, both the WEHBA and Marsh Canada presented to the City of Hamilton's Audit, Finance and Administration Committee on the topic of development bonds. It was great to have Mayor Fred Eisenberger sign in to the meeting as well. He is fully on board with the implementation of development bonds and voiced his full support. The committee council members provided their unanimous approval at the meeting and the decision was formally ratified the following week on June 9th. And with that, the city of Hamilton became the first municipality in Ontario to accept the modern pay on demand development bond, further solidifying themselves as a forward thinking business friendly city to work and invest in. Next slide, please. Thank you. Oh, sorry, back one. Thanks. <laughs> Here's a summary of what types of agreements the city of Hamilton will accept bonds for. The city will accept bonds for all types of development agreements. In short, any agreement that they would accept a letter of credit for, they will accept a bond for. For example, agreements for subdivisions, site plans, external works, joint services, consent, etc. Furthermore, the bond will be acceptable for various types of developments, including single family, multifamily, high rise construction, greenfield, and brownfield developments. It is important to point out, however, that at this point in time, the city is accepting bonds only for new agreements. They are not yet accepting bonds to replace outstanding letters of credit on existing agreements. Next slide, please. Thanks. On this slide, we will go over the technical aspects of the City of Hamilton's finalized development bond wording. There are seven key features to talk through here, which you will see mirrors the key features of LCs. First and foremost, as befitting its name, this bond is payable upon demand. The city has sole and absolute discretion to declare the, def the developer in default without the onus of having to prove that the default occurred. Once the city has submitted a notice of claim, the surety has a set number of days within which to provide funds to the city. The city of Hamilton's bond wording stipulates a payment period of 10 days. This bond wording is irrevocable in that there cannot be any changes made to the bond without express agreement from all parties involved. The bond is evergreen. In other words, it automatically renews from year to year until such time that the development is complete to the city's satisfaction and the maintenance periods have expired. The city will then either return the bond to the surety or provide written confirmation that they have approved the release of the bond. Another feature of the bond is that it includes a notice of cancellation provision, which comes into effect should the surety company wish to cancel the bond. In that event, the surety must provide the city with 90 days notice of cancellation. The developer is then obligated to provide the city with replacement security at least 30 days prior to the effective termination date of the bond. If the bond is not replaced to the city's satisfaction, the bond shall remain in effect. Partial drawdowns are permitted. The aggregate amount of drawdowns are capped by the bond amount. And finally, the bond amount may be reduced as certain milestones or construction completion certificates are achieved. Bond reduction may only occur upon receipt of written approval from the city. Next slide, please. So this slide essentially repeats the information from the previous slide, but I like including it as it is a good visual representation of the key features of the bond and the fact that they match the key features in an LC. As touched on by Fraser earlier, this modern bond form was created in consultation originally with the city of Calgary. We sat down with their finance, legal and planning and development teams and asked them, what features do you need in a bond? Through those discussions, it became clear that we needed to craft a bond that would mirror an LC, which is exactly what we did. This chart does a good job of illustrating that this bond does indeed satisfy that requirement. Next slide, please. So here we will talk about surety companies' credit worthiness. Sureties are regulated by the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, or OSFI which is the same governing body that oversees banks. 
In order to become licensed to operate, the surety must undergo rigorous review by OSPI. The review process consists of many different categories, perhaps most importantly, adequate capitalization. Surety companies are required to adhere to um, minimum capitalization requirements to ensure they are financially equipped to pay out claims. OSFI oversight is ongoing and continuous to ensure the surety continues to satisfy these requirements throughout its operations. Although all sureties must maintain OSFI standards, not all sureties are the same. So external credit rating agencies are a useful tool to ensure you are working with an excellent surety company. Those with a minimum AM best rating of A minus, S&P rating of A minus, or Moody's rating of A3 would qualify as excellent. Okay, so here, let's talk about the advantages to a developer of using bonds over LCs. Bonds helped to free up opportunity cost expand liquidity, reduce debt, and not only are they cost effective, they represent cost savings over LCs. Bonds are unsecured credit, meaning they are off balance sheet and do not require cash collateral the way that LCs do. The cash that is set aside as collateral for LCs essentially are stagnant and not put to efficient use. Instead of cash collateral, surety companies utilize corporate guarantees as security behind the bond. This improves the developer's working capital and cash flow and relieves the liquidity crunch that LCs impose. The freed up funds can be used to cash flow the development itself and can be used for other projects and future investment in the community. By using a bond instead of an LC, Developers can also free up their borrowing capacity and relieve the negative impact that LCs can have against debt covenants. Cost-wise, bond rates are often lower than, if not matching, the LC rate. It is also noteworthy that bonds do not carry commitment fees or standby fees, so they are overall more cost-effective than LCs. These advantages translate to freedom for the developer to diversify their capital sources and reduce the overall cost of capital. Next slide, please. Thank you. So how does a developer qualify for a bond? There are three main pillars of review that the surety company will use to assess the bondability of a developer. The pillars include credit quality, history, and project-specific considerations. The credit quality of the developer is key, so the surety will want to review the financial statements to decipher the developer's profitability, liquidity, equity base, and associated debt loads. The surety will also want to know that the developer has a proven track record of having successfully completed developments in the past. Sureties will generally be hesitant to provide bond support to inexperienced developers, given land development is a complex business that comes with a significant learning curve. So sureties will want to work with well-established development companies with a history of success. The third pillar of review is with project-specific considerations, such as pro formas and budgets, project financing, project schedule, selection of trades, and so on. When it comes to bond cost, we are seeing a range of 0.7 to 1.25%. When compared with LC rates, which typically range from 1% to 3%, bond rates represent a significant cost savings of roughly 30 to 60%. The rate for each individual developer will depend on the result of the surety review. Generally speaking, the stronger the review, the lower the rate. The key takeaway here is that we have been consistently successful at securing bond rates that are lower than the developer's LC rate, or at the very most match the LC rate. Again, it's important to point out here that there are no setup fees, commitment fees, or standby fees with bonds like there are with LCs. Next slide, please. In summary, 
The development bond provides many benefits, both to, to the developer and to the municipality. For the developer, the key benefits include relieving liquidity crunch, freeing up opportunity cost and capital for investment in new projects, and bonds are more cost effective, thereby reducing the overall cost of doing business. For municipalities, the key benefits include the fact that the bond provides the same quality of financial assurance as an LC. Surety pre-qualification of developers adds an additional layer of assurance and the municipality is poised as a forward thinking growth oriented place to do business. That concludes our presentation. Many thanks again to the WE HBA for inviting Marsh Canada to present to participate in this presentation. Thanks also to the attendees. We hope that you found this session informative. Uh, we have some time for questions before we turn it back over to Terry to wrap up the, the session. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to type them into the Q&A or chat box. Uh, in the meantime, Michelle, can you please advance to the next slide? Um, the contact details for myself and Fraser are up on the screen. Uh, we welcome you to reach out to us with any questions or further discussion as well. Thank you again. Thank you, Stephanie and Fraser. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, being here today to share some of the uh, technical details with our uh, membership at the West End Home Builders Association. And I can see from the attendees list, there are uh, a number of uh, OHBA members from other uh, associations uh, in other municipalities across Ontario that are certainly uh, very interested in surety bonds. And uh, I think there's some uh, municipal staff from a few municipalities uh, as well. So definitely appreciate everybody um, who joined today for the discussion. Um, if there are any questions, please type them in the chat function or the Q&A uh, box at the bottom. Um, but as people are sort of thinking of questions, I'll, I'll take, uh, I guess, moderator's prerogative and, and ask the first question. Um, Hamilton has just adopted surety bonds. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, Stephanie, you or Fraser can share some of the Alberta experiences from municipalities like Calgary as to how the first year went. Were there growing pains? Uh, what was the take up like? And were there any public policy adjustments made through that uh, implementation period during the first year or two um, as everybody was sort of navigating and figuring it out? So maybe I'll, um, Mike, I can start that one off and Stephanie can, can jump in. One of the learnings that we had with the city of Calgary was when they originally launched it, similar to the city of Hamilton, um, they said that they would accept um, bond as our bonds as an alternative moving forward with future projects. Um, shortly after launching that, um, they they changed around a little bit and they started accepting the replacement of existing uh, letters of credit, which was a pretty extraordinary win for um, developers in the city of Calgary. I think the city of Calgary alone was holding approximately $250 million in letters of credit from the local development community. So they put some parameters around that, um, such as I think they could go back um, up to two years um, and it had to be a minimum um, LC amount. And I can't remember what that amount was, maybe $100,000. Um, so anyways, that was one learning um, that we had uh, from there. And so we look forward to continuing to work with Hamilton on potentially um, working towards that. Uh, the other thing with the city of Calgary was it, it actually uh, went so well um, that they extended it to um, offering um, surety bonds for other items as well, such as shoring agreements um, and, and high rise um, developments, which I believe is already included with um, what ha Hamilton has launched here. So Steph, um, if you have anything to add to that. No, I think you did a great job of, of covering that. Um, you know, also uh, let's, let's kind of talk a little bit about the city of Edmonton as well. They started um, accepting, um, you know, just for bonds for new agreements only thinking, I think they were a little bit concerned that there would just be a huge influx of developers wanting to replace existing LCs with bonds. And they were a little bit worried about, um, you know, additional administrative burden, let's say. 
uh, and turned out not to be the case. They, they very quickly decided, actually, you know, this is going to make sense. They talked to a few industry stakeholders um, and, uh, you know, developers active in their region and figured out that um, it wasn't going to be something that was going to happen regularly all the time. So, so they decided to allow for um, developers to have the option to replace existing LCs with bonds um, through a pretty simple process, actually, that, you know, they would process... Um, an amendment document that would be one or two pages to amend the existing development agreement simply to write in the ability to use a bond. And then they've really only had to go through the replacement process with a few, uh, less than a handful of development agreements so far. So it, it didn't end up being um, a really big deal <laughs> that they might have originally expected. So. Stephanie, during your presentation, you mentioned um, that bonding companies would typically look at uh, project specific considerations. Um, can you give a couple examples of what kind of project specific considerations uh, a surety company might look at? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we really like to start with an executive summary. Um, so a high level summary of, you know, where is the development located? number of lots, um, you know, demographic that you want to serve, what's the market like, you know, it, this is, um, you know, developers put this package together for their financing partners anyway, so it's, it's already there and available. Um, and what's really great about um, usually what the surety company is asking for is copies of things that developers have already put together, either for their own purposes or for their banking partners. So it's, it, you know, sureties just want to be in the know of information that's already available. Uh, they don't necessarily subject developers to go and, you know, create all sorts of brand new reports just for the sureties purpose. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. It's usually a pretty efficient um, process. But yeah, you know, we start with the executive summary, then the surety wants to just make sure that the project economics makes sense. Um, you know, are there, are there pre-sales in place? Who are your home building partners? Um, you know, are you gonna develop some of the lots yourselves or sell them all off to home builders? Those kinds of things, in addition to, like I mentioned, the pro formas, budgets, um, confirmation of project financing, um, that all comes together to form a really good picture of what the project is going to look like overall. A couple questions are coming in through the box now. Um, someone has asked, uh, said that they have seen how LOC drawdowns work. So if something goes awry and a municipality wants to draw upon the surety bond, is the money there locked in to undertake the work? Yeah, I'm happy to answer this one. Um, and Fraser, you can feel free to jump in later if you wanted to add to it as well. But um, the, the key thing here is the bond is being written by a surety company that is well capitalized um, and is properly licensed and has the ability to pay out on any claims that come through. So the really good thing about bonds is you're really relying on the credit worthiness of the surety company who, who has the ability and the financial wherewithal to pay uh, to pay it on any claims. So you're not, you know, so in the event that the um, something goes wrong uh, or the developer um, goes through an insolvency scenario or something, you're not, uh, you're not really uh, put at risk of the, insol the, the developer um, not having funds to pay out on the bond. You, what you're doing is you're relying on the surety to pay out on the bond. So there's some guarantee there. Makes sense. Another question has come in, uh, has pay on demand bonds been available, an available option for builders or developers for some time, or is this a recent discovered use? So this really started with the city of Calgary. Uh, we started working with them mid 2018 and then in March, 2019, um, the city of Calgary became the first municipality in Canada to accept this modern pay on demand bond form. So it has been actively um, in use for the last um, two and a half years or so. Uh, and we've been actively issuing these bonds uh, with the, the city of Calgary. And then of course, all throughout Alberta now, you know, we've got uh, Edmonton, St. Albert, Strathcona County, Leduc, um, and, and several others on board that we've been actively issuing bonds for, for over two years. There's um, a couple questions um, through on the on the chat, and we're answering them, but only the panelists are seeing. So maybe I'll I'll um, jump into 
Um, so, so Donna from Niagara asks, um, receiving the presentation. So Donna, absolutely. We um, can send you a copy of the presentation. And for anybody that's interested in receiving a copy of the presentation, feel free to reach out to Stephanie or myself. Our contact information is there. Or, of course, um, we HBA. Um, we, we will plan to put out the, uh, a copy of the PowerPoint um, PDF to uh, all of the attendees that joined us this morning, um, uh, likely later today or tomorrow. So, so further to that point, as I mentioned as well, if I, if I can jump in here, that OHBA, um, as I mentioned in my remarks, has, has been working coordinating with locals and other municipalities to schedule these meetings. Uh, to have Stephanie and Fraser come on board and make a presentation and add our, our context as well. So um, if, if you wish also contact OHBA office, uh, Alex Pacini or Joe Vaccaro, and we'll coordinate that as we have a number of these meetings coming up in the coming weeks. And the more we have, uh, the better it is. I mean, this is just a matter of switching from the provincial table to more grassroots approach. Um, and certainly it's a terrific win that Hamilton is, is uh, accepted the use of bonds. I think that shows a lot of leadership. And the more of these that we can go into municipalities and gain acceptance, I think the job will be easier to do is so we can move forward and gain momentum. Certainly OHBA is going to be keeping a scorecard, a, a menu sheet, everyone that we, we uh, <clears throat> knock down the domino or, or, or get acceptance. Uh, we're, we're going to certainly publicize that and almost make it a little like a bit of a contest to move forward. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out. So we'll round up all the support and get the presentations uh, geared up specifically for either regional groups or uh, local municipalities. Ha happy to do whatever is necessary. Thank you, Bob. And uh, I'll add into the chat function um, uh, shortly. Uh, Alex Pacini would be the, the go-to contact at OHBA for any of the uh, municipalities or uh, local associations to sort of uh, arrange uh, assistance from OHBA. Um, there's a question in the chat here um, asking, what is the yearly cost of a surety bond compared to an LA, uh, a letter of credit or any other bond? Yeah, so um, the cost of a bond will vary depending on the surety review. So, you know, as I mentioned, the, the surety is going to look into the, the credit quality, the history, uh, of the developer plus look at the project specific considerations um, and then complete the review uh, based on those three main pillars. Uh, and so the rate will vary depending on the results of that review. But what we're seeing is a range of roughly 0.7 to 1.25% um, per annum. And uh, what we're seeing in terms of LC rates though, it ranges around you know, from one to 3%. So bond rates are certainly uh, lower than LC rates. I hope that helps. Okay. Um, there was one other question in the Q&A box. Uh, I, I think Fraser, you tried typing an answer, but maybe just for the benefit of uh, everybody just listening. Um, do you know, I, I mean, uh, so Marsh is uh, involved with the, the accepting and writing of the bond wording. Uh, I, I know that there are some other companies out there, but I, I think for the purposes of this webinar and the good work that uh, Stephanie and Fraser have done, um, we as an association are certainly uh, recommending that they are members and they are great folks to contact and, and walk through uh, and provide uh, assistance. Um, just looking at the chat here. I can, add, um, I can add a little bit to that too, Mike. Um, one of the keys when, when meeting with uh, beginning with Calgary and through all municipalities that we met with is Marsh is agnostic in this. So um, this was not, this is not a Marsh only product uh, solution. This is a solution um, and product for the industry and benefits the industry. Um, so there's other brokers out there um, that um, will be able to work on this as well. And again, so just um, don't think of this as just a marsh thing. This is, um, in the end, we're going to benefit from this. Everybody's gonna benefit from this. Um, there's a lot of business out there. Uh, so feel free to reach out to who you want. Obviously we'd love to, uh, to answer or field your questions on it and help you out with it um, if, if that works for you as well. 
I'm going to thank Fraser and uh, Stephanie for uh, joining us today. I don't see any other questions having uh, come in, so I think this is a good opportunity to wrap up uh, a couple of minutes early. Um, uh, as Fraser said, there, there may be other companies out there, uh, but I want to, in particular, uh, thank Marsh for their assistance to our association, the West End Home Builders Association, and uh, helping us get this over the finish line at the City of Hamilton. Um, your work advice um, and, and experience in other jurisdictions was certainly uh, instrumental uh, in, uh, in working with the City of Hamilton to provide them with the, uh, the assurance that this is a product that uh, has worked well in other jurisdictions. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to WeHBA First Vice President Terry Johns once again to, uh, to wrap things up. Terry, I think you're on mute. Mike, <clears throat> Mike, did you just throw it over to me? Yes. My complete computer just went black and froze. Apologies for that. Um, I'm going to do a wrap up and thank Bob Sheckendens very much for his time today. I'm hoping that you didn't cover that part. Sorry I, if I missed anything. And again, to reiterate the thank you to Stephanie and uh, Frazier. We really appreciate all your time on this. Um, thank you to everyone for taking their time out of their day today to attend. We hope this was informative. As we said, please reach out if you have any questions and uh, Mike will be releasing uh, the slide information for your use. Uh, we hope everybody has a good day and we're hoping uh, to see everybody live in a person uh, perhaps this fall. Thank you everyone.